already the second hit and I am going oh yeah White Widow I remember you <laughs> oh my goodness welcome back to the Red Bench it's time for another Red Bench review I want to thank you for joining us here in the high desert of Southern California my name is John and I'll be your host as we continue the search for the Holy Grail of Herb. Well, my friends, the search this week takes us to look at a classic. We're looking at White Widow, and this comes to us from 8-Track Brand. That's what we've got in this jar here. White Widow is a classic. Um, this one goes back to the 1990s. That's when it was originally developed in Holland. And as soon as it came out in 1995, it went on to win the High Times Cannabis Cup Award for that year. This is a worldwide popular strain. If back in the 90s, the 2000s, um, I understand that if you went to any coffee shop in Amsterdam, there was White Widow sitting on the menu. I've seen White Widow over the years. I go back to White Widow um, Back in 2008 is the first time I encountered it in July, as a matter of fact. I was looking back at some photos today that I took at uh, the collectives that I used to take. I used to take photos to, for collectives in Long Beach between 2008 and 2012. And I photographed um, over 360 different strains and a lot of strains I photographed multiple times and I went back and went, well, when, when did I first come across White Widow? And that was in July of 2008. I've enjoyed it many times since then. It's it got a certain place in my heart. It is a sativa dominant strain. And um, this one that we're looking at it from 8-Track comes in at 32.2% THC which is pretty high for a White Widow. Let's get into this jar, let's check it out, and let's see what 8-Track has put in here. Um, I've been buying 8-Track brand for about six months now. Um, I buy it at the Micro Buttery down in DHS. Um, they sell, this is a quarter that comes in this jar, and they sell their quarters for $30 a quarter, plus California tax, which brings it up to about $40. Um, I've tried their Bubba Kush, I've tried their Sour Diesel, I've tried their Island Sweet Skunk, I've tried, uh, I've tried a bunch of their Northern Lights was fantastic. Um, I've tried so many different strains and what I like about 8-Track be is besides the fact that they're kind of going for this retro kind of thing is um, that they do the classics and I have a special place in my heart for the classic strains. So let's, let me show you, let me show you this jar real quick. On the front here, it says 8-Track. I like that logo because it looks like a, looks really old school. Um, their, their slogan at the top says where the music starts. Um, over here on the back, we have strain information and the THC, which is 32.2%. And down here we have the California warning label. And of course in there you can take a little peek at the notes and see what's coming up. All right, well let's open this and let's check it out. Okay, it's got a little seal up here at the top where, the, where it says where the music starts. Oops. Let's try pulling that from the other end. Oh my. Of course I'm having difficulty with it. Okay, here we go. Oh my. <laughs> Just having lots of fun here trying to open the jar. Okay, here we go. Let's let's take a look here. Piney, earthy, kind of old school marijuana smelling. Yeah, just very classic marijuana smelling in there. Very little bit of piney and a little bit. Um, let's let's pour this out on the tray and look at the nugs. 
Oh, they pour out like little rocks. They're little solid, solid things. When I was looking at photographs today um, of the of of White Widow back in the day, the thing that I noted was it was such a leafy kind of growth. And these nugs here are looking like solid, dense little. They look they have that indica kind of look, really, not a, not a sativa look at all. Well, let's photograph these. Let's uh, so you can look at these closer, and I'll be back in just a second. All right, as you can tell from looking at those photos, those are some dense nugs. They're just little nuglets and nugs and that are just really, I'm surprised at how dense they are. Uh, <laughs> anyways, um, enough of that. Well, let's get into them and let's, let's find out how dense these are. I'm, I'm like really excited about this particular one because it's the biggest nug in the whole bunch. And so let's cut into this and let's see how the cure is. Let's see how, how dry this is. Oh my gosh, that cuts up. That's not dry at all. That is just very chunky, super chunky. Oh my gosh, this is super chunky nugs. I, I, like, I, like I say, when, when it comes to my mind, White Widow, I'm like, I'm thinking these leafy sativa type buds. And when I first looked at this, when I first poured out the jar, I thought, oh my gosh, that's, that, that sounds too solid for a sativa dominant hybrid. But surprisingly, these are just cutting up really nicely. Oh my. And there's, I, I, I must say that the smell is just not there. There's really hardly any smell coming up from this at all. Um, the faint odors that I'm uh, noticing, the faint aromas, are um, just really just an earthy, classic marijuana smell. Very nice, but um, let's put it in the bomb and let's give it a try. Chunky. All right. Well, I have not smoked White Widow now in about five, seven years or so. As long as we've been living up in the high desert, I have, I have not smoked any White Widow. And that gives us about 10 years actually. So, I mean, back in the day, I smoked a whole bunch of it, but uh, it's, kinda, it's kinda been a while. So here we go. White Widow from 8-Track. Let's give this a spin. very smooth. There's a certain sweetness to the flavor that is really hard to define as any particular sweetness at all, but it is uh, really got a little certain sweetness to it. Wow, that was really good. Let's, let's take a second hit of this and let's, uh, let's taste that sweetness again. Mmm, White Widow. Oh my, already the second hit and I am going, oh yeah, White Widow, I remember you. <laughs> oh my goodness, that has a really nice, there's a certain sweetness to it, a certain sweet quality to the flavor, a little spicy on the after, on the, after, on the exhale, really nice, really nice. 
Well, let's give this about 10 minutes. Let all the effects settle in. I'm going to take a few more hits here. And um, I'll be back in 10 minutes. And I'll tell you what I think of White Widow. Mmm. Wow. I think I really like White Widow. <laughs> it makes me a little bit forgetful. It makes me feel a little fuzzy. It makes me feel a lot fuzzy. It makes me feel hazy. It makes me feel, oh, just my whole body is relaxed at this moment. Um, I would call this predominantly a head high, but it does have a very relaxing body thing. Um, it took me about five minutes. I, the first couple of hits, I was like, okay, something's going on. Something's going on. I'm feeling the effects and it was heading more towards a, um, like a sativa. I was like, okay, yep, this is a sativa dominant because this is 60, 40 sativa indica. And, um, I was like, okay, this, I'm, I'm ready for a sativa ride. But right now I'm, I'm having a very mellow, mellow kind of hybrid kind of adventure right now. The vibe, I must say on this, is incredibly positive. I, I smoked this and I was like, oh, I can see why this one has been a perennial favorite at the coffee shops in Amsterdam. Why? Uh, year after year, people just like, oh, give me some of that White Widow because this one just feels good. It just makes my, just makes me feel good inside, makes me feel good in my head, you know. Um, but very floaty, very relaxed. Um, uh, the high, when it hit me, when it finally saturated throughout my body after about five minutes, um, I was really surprised. It's like the high just kept building and building and building and building. And by the time I got to the 10 minute mark, um, huh, I was surprisingly stoned. <laughs> it just, it had taken over my whole situation. Of course, I, I did um, dust the bowl there and get into a second bowl, but uh, I just feel, um, one of, one of the things that's on my notes here, it, it asks the strength, and I put pronounced. Yes, I would say that this has a very pronounced strength. <laughs> oh my, I don't know why that's really important. I just thought I'd share that with you. Um, I, I'm just feeling really mellow, um, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a little more mellow and take another hit. Yes, I am. Um, White Widow, ah, oh, this is, this is some very relaxing herb. At least at this stage of the high. I can't tell you what's going to be like in another 15 minutes. It's like, um, but we'll find out. Why Widow? Like I said, this one just takes me back. It just really takes me back. I just, I would spend, you know, like I mentioned earlier, I spent all day looking at photos that I took back in the day. Back in the day, I mean back in 2008 to 2012. Okay, so we're talking um, 15, 10 to 15 years ago. And, um, it was such a great opportunity. Um, I, I, I literally photographed 360 different strains and it was, um, they, I, I got such an education because I also had to write some reviews for some of them and uh, little, little blurbs to put up with them on the website. And it was such an education. Back then it was a completely different world than we experienced now. Now I go into a dispensary and there are tons of different 
brands there. You can get your vapes, you can get your flour, you can get your edibles, you can get your tinctures, you can get your um, lotions, <laughs> you know, you, there are drinks. Um, there are all these different products that you can get. And back in the day, um, you go into a, a collective and literally you'd walk in after you got buzzed in and then you'd go through a little secret back door. Uh, they'd put you into a little room They'd go through a door, they'd put you into a room and they'd have to buzz you into the back. And you got into the back and there'd be these glass cases back there full of jars of marijuana. And the like mason, like big mason jars of marijuana and there would be all these strains. Um, there were no brands whatsoever. All it was was different strains. You know, there's your Amnesia Haze and there is your OG Kush. And there's your granddaddy purple and there's your lamb's bread and you would like and each uh collective that you go to usually would have about 15 to 20 different strains and um the way it was arranged is you would like go in and you would look and along the top shelf would be the best herb and on the middle shelf would be the second best herb and then along the bottom was everything else and so um, you literally had top shelf herb and so when you <laughs> it was like you knew exactly where to look you're like oh my gosh that sour diesel looks really great and they pull it out and there'd be nugs that are like two three gram nugs they're really big stuff not this not the not the little nugs that we have nowadays that in, in all of these prepackaged eights and quarters they, they, they tend to have small nugs. I'm like, where are the big nugs? Somebody's got them. I'm not getting them, you know? Um, and, and anyways, um, so um, I, I just, my mind has just uh, been filled with these ideas of thinking back on the, the collectives back in the day. It was such a different world, such a different world. But we are here in this world and we are reviewing um, <laughs> um, our White Widow here. And um, what are we gonna give 8-Tracks White Widow? Well, like I said, I, I'm not too thinking too highly of the size of the nugs, you know, they're mids. And, um, and but the smell, not there, no, no smell. But the flavor, was a nice, like I like I said, a nice working man's kind of herb. You know, you can smoke this one until the cows come home, so to speak, and you it and and enjoy it all along the way. But the high, wow! Um, here I am. I'm like 15 minutes, 20 minutes into into the high, and that hazy fuzzy experience that I was having just after smoking, after the, the original smoking, um, when I first came back from the 10 minutes, has, has completely evaporated. And now I am experiencing a, a real sativa kind of high. It has switched over from the indica to the sativa, and it is really a totally different experience whatsoever. Um, um, it's still very enjoyable. It's still very positive, but it is talkative. <laughs> it makes me want to just hang out and uh, and sesh, you know, with somebody. It's like um, this is what I would call great sesh herb because you can just because it has that sativa back in. Oh my! What goodness that is! What goodness! <sighs> Thank you so much for joining me here at the Red Bench this week as we uh, go through this little adventure with White Widow. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down there. And uh, until next week, best of health.